you know, thank you so much for coming today and, yeah. and talking with me. Um, I felt a real opportunity to learn when I started learning more about Aboriginal society. Mm. Uh, I've recently um, moved into this new role running the Institutional Australia business at ANZ and, and leading a big business that has a, historically been run a bit of um, a command and control style or you know, kind of chief yeah. at the helm making the decisions and, and we shall follow. Uh, and you know, it's very much embedded, I think, in Western culture, corporate um, and political, yeah. etc. But as, as a human being and as a leader, I feel that we've evolved mm -hmm. uh, as a society and I think we need to hear more voices mm -hmm. uh, and get more points of view mm -hmm. to be able to decide what's the best way forward. And so I was, I was made, I was educated about Aboriginal society and the difference between power and authority and collective decisioning and I felt that that really rang true to you know how I wanted to run the business so can you share a little bit about what this is the difference between power and authority and why there isn't any how can there not be any chiefdoms yeah well I mean it's interesting you could hardly speak about that without kind of uh, alluding to change and transformation mm -hmm. you know occurring and um, I think you know, in periods of homeostasis, um, you can have hierarchies, you know, for longer than you normally would be able to have them. And mm -hmm. they seem stable and they seem productive, but they're only productive when you don't have to pivot, you don't have to move, you don't have to change. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess uh, it, it's about survival. Um, and survival is about adaptation. Mm -hmm. But if you have a culture that's lasting longer, then that's a culture that's constantly in flux mm -hmm. because you know, you've got to move with the land or the context uh, before the land moves you mm -hmm. and, and it will move you because <laughs> yeah. things are changing and sometimes it's slow enough that you don't uh, realize that the change is happening. So, yeah, you, you, uh, it's worth looking, I guess, at, at um, cultures that have done this successfully and that have had leadership models and um, uh, decision making models that are more agile, more distributed. Mm -hmm. um, more emergent you know so you've got um you know larger so groups of diverse people and and the leadership and power being distributed throughout those groups mm -hmm. um in a way that mimics the complex systems that they're part of mm -hmm. but i guess in in indigenous uh leadership models it's there are hierarchies mm -hmm. you know but these are emergent in contexts okay. and they're usually temporary hi hierarchies okay. And there's nothing wrong with a temporary hierarchy. Yeah. You know, yeah, as long as that's recycling back around all the time. Yeah. Um, you, you don't have to try and create a static heterarchy and say, oh, look, we've got distributed leadership. Yeah. Because that'll be clunky too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's better to have, you know, a, a broad pool of potential authority mm -hmm. and, and leadership and allow temporary hierarchies to spike and emerge yeah. in the right moments. Yeah. And I'm sure, I do want to go back to authority in a minute, but just on that, that temporary leadership, I mean, have you found, is it something that is selected or almost organic? Is it more that, you know, you, you come forward or mm. something a little bit more organic and making space for people to feel that it's safe to go forward and speak and, and assume that temporary leadership? Well, in the end, the only truth, the only consensus reality that everyone can agree on is, is, is the context as it emerges. Mm -hmm. So the place where you are, the land, like what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, and, and that's easy. So basically it's more like it's just responsive. Okay. The leadership is responsive to shifting contexts. Okay. In, I think, Western society, <coughs> they are, tend to be synonymous, authority and yeah. power. And in, in the Indigenous Australia society, they are not synonymous. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's only um, Mary Graham's uh, scholarship there. Okay. Uh, she's informed my thinking around that a lot. But yeah, there is a separation of power and authority. So there's no none of this positional authority where you know you happen to have you know climbed the ladder yeah. and have this position. I mean, you have to actually know your stuff. Yeah, and that that collective power. Mm. Um, what I've learned is. Everyone has a voice, but that collective power, you know, a five-year-old might have a voice, mm. 
an opinion on something and yeah. you know drive some decision making from a collective. Yeah. Is, is that is that? Well, a, and and you listen, and particularly the outliers. You know, everybody does have a voice, and it all goes in, and the wisdom is in the aggregate. Okay. When I think about you know the the business that I lead and the team that I lead, the way that I'm interpreting and the way that I'm thinking about it is. You know, it, this is about collective decision making and making sure that everyone is safe to elevate their voice mm -hmm. and to have a say in, in which way we go. And there's going to be outliers, but it's important to hear and to make sure that we have collective agreement on the way forward. Yeah. Well, that's just it. It's, it's about, I mean, in order for everybody to have a voice, in a lot of, in, in this society right now, people, um, need to understand more what it is to have a voice. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people feel voiceless and unheard unless their narrative is coming out on top. Mm -hmm. If their narrative doesn't become dominant and the loudest and one in the room that everyone agrees with, then they feel like they're not being heard. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to win with their voice and for their voice to drown out everybody else's and they feel like they don't have a voice unless their voice is the top voice. Okay. Um, but it's, it's a very different thing to move into a culture in a group where everybody's voice is part of the aggregate yeah. and there isn't a dominant narrative. It's just, um, it's something that's emergent from the group. Um, that's hard for some people to be satisfied with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the trick I think of leadership is to, um, is to really get people into a situation where they're, where they are feeling satisfied. Yeah. Um, with their contribution and with the collective, um, you know, understanding of the group and the direction of the flock. How do you still, and as you finish, help people, even that person who isn't the loudest voice or it isn't the narrative and isn't the way we go, how do we work to help them still feel on board, heard, mm. whatever it might be the term mm. that we use for that, mm. so that, you know, they don't just leave the flock altogether. Yeah but they become part of it. I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's just something to think about. Well, that's, about. that's the trick because there's other evolutionary pressures that are happening yeah. um, in the wider social context. Yeah. You know, those people are going onto the social media platforms where that is constantly being reinforced for them, yeah. you know, and so they, they are bringing that mindset into your meeting yeah. as well, you know. The secret of all this, how to make it work, is show, don't tell. Um, if you're stating it up front, you know, if you're saying, oh, we're increasing diversity, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, you know, or yeah, we want to do disruptive innovation. If you're saying it, you know, then it, it's just words yeah. and it becomes buzzwords and people roll their eyes because, you know, you've been in this industry long enough to know that, yeah. that there's, there's always the latest thing coming in and everybody rolls their eyes and goes along with it and does the branding, but it doesn't actually <laughs> happen. It's, you know, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, you show, don't tell. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. Really no appreciate it. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm sure our readers and listeners will absolutely love the insights you shared. So thank you again. Sweet. Thanks. Take